इंडिया की जीत का सिलसिला जारी है जिसके पीछे टीम के किसी भी खिलाड़ी के योगदान को नजरअंदाज नहीं किया जा सकता है लेकिन अब इसे जलन कहें या फिर कुछ और पड़ोसी मुल्क पाकिस्तान के एक पूर्व खिलाड़ी हैं, जिनकी आंखों में अब हार्दिक पांड्या की प्रतिभा और शानदार परफॉर्मेंस चुभ रही है यह है पाकिस्तान के पूर्व खिलाड़ी अब्दुल रजाक जिन्हें इन दिनों हार्दिक पांड्या की चिंता खाई जा रही है खुद की पाकिस्तान टीम कितने लय में है इसका उन्हें कतई चिंता नहीं है खुद के सरफराज एंड कंपनी भले ही भाड़ में जाए लेकिन हार्दिक पांड्या को वो दुनिया का नंबर वन ऑलराउंडर बनता देखना चाहते हैं। खुद के टीम में खामिया हो या नहीं लेकिन टीम इंडिया के ऑलराउंडर हार्दिक पांड्या में कमियाँ निकाल रहे हैं हाल ही में अब्दुल रजाक ने एक वीडियो ट्वीट किया है जिसमे उन्होंने न सिर्फ हार्दिक की खामियां गिनाई हैं, बल्कि बीसीसीआई से मांग की है कि वो पांड्या को कोचिंग देना चाहते हैं। आप भी देखिए उन्होंने क्या कुछ कहा हेलो uh, मैं हूं अब्दुल रजाक और आज मैंने इंडिया और वेस्ट इंडीज का मैच देख रहा था और फर्स्ट टाइम मैंने uh, हार्दिक पांड्या को देखा बैटिंग करते हुए उसमें काफी फॉल्ट नजर आए उसके फुट मूवमेंट में उसकी बैट स्विंग में उसके बॉडी बैलेंस में जब वो हिटिंग करते थे और काफ़ी फॉल्ट नज़र आए और अगर मैं इसके साथ दो टू वीक्स अगर मैं वर्क करूं कोचिंग इसको मैं आ, सिखाने की कोशिश करूं फॉर एग्जांपल अगर मैं दुबई में इसके साथ दो वीक तक काम करता हूं क्रिकेट पे और ये मुझे उम्मीद है कि टू वीक्स के बाद ये दुनिया का नंबर वन हिटर और आर्नर बन सकता है तो आज मैंने बड़ा से क्लोजली वॉच किया तो बस मेरे जेन में आया मैं कहीं मैं शेयर करूंगा और अगर भी सी सी आई चाहती है कि इसमें इम्प्रूवमेंट लाना चाहती है तो मैं इसके लिए तैयार हूं और इसको मैं टू वीक्स में एक मुकम्मल ऑलराउंडर बना सकता हूं पांडे अपना पहला वर्ल्ड कप खेल रहे हैं और वो बतौर ऑलराउंडर कितना अच्छा खेल रहे हैं इसके गवाह है वो आंकड़े जिनकी बदौलत टीम इंडिया को सफलता मिल रही है 25 वर्ष इस खिलाड़ी ने जहां ऑस्ट्रेलिया के खिलाफ 48 रनों की तेज पारी खेली तो वही पाकिस्तान और अफगानिस्तान के खिलाफ खेले गए मैचों में दो दो विकेट झटके इसके अलावा वेस्टइंडीज के खिलाफ धोनी का साथ देते हुए 38 बॉलों पर 46 रनों की तूफानी पारी खेली जिसे देख पूर्व ऑस्ट्रेलियाई क्रिकेटर ब्रैड हॉग ने उन्हें विश्व कप का सर्वश्रेष्ठ ऑलराउंडर कह डाला लेकिन अब्दुल रज्जाक है जो पांड्या के प्रदर्शन ऐसी खुश नहीं है जिन्हें खुद के खिलाड़ी के बजाय भारतीय खिलाड़ियों में खामियां नजर आ रही हैं। ऐसे में हम तो अब्दुल रज़ाक को सिर्फ यही कहेंगे दूसरों पर उंगली उठाने से पहले अपने गिरेबान में झांकना चाहिए साहब थ्री गेम्स आई थिंक वी पुट अप सम रियली बिग स्कोर्स एंड अफगानिस्तान मैच the wicket was a little sticky it was tricky to bat in those circumstances so uh, i think it's a question of adapting understanding these conditions and adapting to that hello this question this uh, world cup is dominated by the left arm fast bowlers so typically how we actually prepare ourselves because we don't have one right now but if you see the uh, michel stark baden off for bolt or even cottrell so how are we Uh, how we prepare from bowling unit how we prepare our batsmen from the left arm fast bowler in absence of uh, our own or even in the practice bowlers we had khalil with us uh, yeah. as our net bowler and also we have a throw down specialist who's particularly a left hander so i think we have enough practice of uh, the left hand bowling uh, as as of now coach can you just talk about the evolution of hardik pandya as an odi bowler i mean 2017 there were some doubts about his ability to bowl 10 overs last game we saw even though he took a hit bowl a full spell kedar was not even used in that on that sort of a pitch so can you just talk about what he's added to his arsenal as a bowler in odi cricket over i think over a period of time it was a big challenge for him to bowl those 10 overs and uh, he did realize that to be able to bowl those 10 overs i love to uh, develop a certain armory in my bowling and that's exactly what he worked on he worked on his slow balls he spoke on his slow bounces uh, also and uh, also he's worked on perfecting his bouncers so all these uh, put together have given him the confidence uh, to go through those 10 overs 
Does the fact that England lost yesterday take the pressure off you heading into the rest of the group games? Actually, we are not even thinking of those matches. We are looking at, we're looking ahead and looking at the matches that we are going to play, and uh, we are absolutely focused on the next game. There was a rare uh, kind of a dot ball percentage of MS Dhoni's innings was quite high in the last match. Uh, you know, is that a matter of concern of the Indian middle order kind of going into a bit of a shell uh, going forward? How big a concern is that? Not really. I, I think according to the uh, situation and the uh, condition of the wicket, uh, we were able to successfully defend the total that we put up. And uh, <clears throat> had we probably lost a wicket at that stage, then uh, things would have uh, turned out differently. So I don't think it's too much of a concern for us right now. So, uh, uh, if we look at uh, the innings that Kohli played on that same track, it, it, did, it didn't look much difficult. He was scoring at more than 100 strike rate. And then MS played that innings. As you said, it's a tricky thing. Like, there has been a few innings like this on and off uh, in the last two years. So, does anyone from the team management, does the head coach or the skipper or the uh, core uh, coaching staff, do they speak to MS or it's the case of since he has played a lot of cricket, he's left to his own devices to plan? Like, how does it happen? Uh, to, to answer your first question, I think uh, uh, Virat Kohli is probably the number one batsman uh, across all formats. So, I, I think to even <laughs> compare anybody uh, to the way he plays is not right. And uh, there is a constant dialogue between all the batsmen, the support staff, the batting coach, the um, um, head coach, Ravi Shastri, has a constant dialogue uh, with all the coaches. I can't really get into the brass tacks of what uh, we discuss, but yes, if, you, if I have to answer your question, there is a constant dialogue for us to improve. Uh, coach, uh, yeah. uh, you had earlier said that Bhuvneshwar Kumar was the first choice pacer ahead of Shami. Now with Shami coming in and doing well and Bhuvneshwar injured, does that change or will, or will Bhuvneshwar be the first choice, especially because he adds some depth in the batting as well when he gets fit? And how is he now in terms of fitness? Bhuvneshwar's injury is not, a, not of any great concern. It was just a niggle, which we didn't want to take a chance. And also it was an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, blood Shami into the... Uh, into the games. Uh, the fact that he's done exceptionally well, augurs well for us, it's an embarrassment of riches. And uh, we would take a call as per the conditions. Bui has also done exceptionally well. So uh, I think it's a pretty good headache to have. Uh, just keeping in mind three matches in the next few days, uh, like six days or something, what is it that your what's the message that you're giving your bowlers, the whole bowling group, that other than the workload management, what do they need to focus on to keep themselves fit for the playoffs of India? Make that. Uh, I think here uh, in the World Cup, we are, every match we are playing a different team. So I think for the bowlers to do well, uh, they need to be aware of uh, the batsmen's strength and uh, their shortcomings. So I think what they really focus on, I, they, have, they have enough uh, breaks between the games and uh, as you rightly said, their workloads have also been managed. What, what they really work on is the uh, mindset and the uh, strengths and uh, weaknesses of the opponents. Yes, sir. Uh, Bharat, uh, across the board, both uh, fast bowlers and spinners have uh, done well uh, in this tournament and in the past also. As a bling coach, uh, how have you managed the spinners and uh, fast bowlers uh, simultaneously? So, if you can throw some, you know, how managing spinners, how difficult or easy or how convenient or comfortable for you? Actually, uh, I think if you if you don the role of a coach, you should be equally adept at both the uh, skill spin and fast bowling. It's about understanding both that uh, gives you the best chance to manage them. Uh, as, as for the spinners, I think, again, as I answered the earlier question, the more you are aware and the more you understand what you are capable of doing, uh, these two factors would ensure that you, uh, you have the best platform to, for you to perform. So if you, if you ask me how easy or how difficult it is, I don't think so. I think it's, uh, it's about empowerment 
and uh, the more knowledge he has about himself and of the opponents, that would help any bowler to do well. Uh, coach, uh, right here, Coach. Uh, how do you look at the West Indies batting challenge con considering the familiarity with all the players? So, uh, do you see this as a different kind of a batting challenge for the bowlers and how do you prepare your bowlers for them? It is. They are, a, they are an outstanding side and uh, they play real positive cricket. Um, we are aware of the challenges that uh, exist in this game. And uh, I think our plans, our plans are pretty much in place. And uh, we are up for the challenge. Uh, the West Indies obviously got likes of Chris Gale and Brathwaite who, who can score very quickly. Do you have to change your approach at all against such a kind of a positive batting lineup? Yes, of course. Um, they do have, as I mentioned earlier, they do have their strengths. And uh, also it's a big challenge for the bowlers to, um, especially when, uh, you know, they, they come after you. But whenever batsmen come after you, if you're willing to look at it uh, deeply, there is a chance for it uh, in it for the bowlers. And I think that's, that's what the bowlers would be looking to do. Sure. Coach, uh, there was a time when Shami struggled with his fitness. He even got dropped from the team. What was the kind of conversation that you had with him at that point of time? And how happy you are to see a very much fit Shami? <laughs> It was a pretty uh, long conversation. I can't really bring that to the table here. But yes, uh, the Shami was was in a totally different mindset. And uh, we had to, uh, the head coach, me, all of us had to sit down and uh, speak to him and uh, kind of draw a future map for him uh, and had to convince him regarding that. And he, had, he was going through certain personal problems as well at that point of time. So beyond all that, I think what has really uh, got him into the situation that he is, is his uh, ability to play cricket. And that's exactly what we made him focus on. And uh, I think the rest is there for everybody to see.